this one is going to be exhausting. If just thinking about traveling with a toddler and a baby has you feeling exhausted already, you need today's video. As a mom of two who has traveled internationally countless times, I have some secrets for traveling with babies and toddlers that you don't want to miss. Keep watching. Hi friends, I'm Sarah. This is my channel, My Home, Your Home, Our Home, and I also have a blog by the same name. I'm so glad that you found this today and I hope that it really is helpful to you. For today's video, I consulted several moms who also have a lot of experience going overseas and they had a few different tips than I had. So we're putting all of those together in today's video and you can find something that will help you and your toddler. We're also going to talk about babies. Babies are a little bit easier to travel with in some ways because if they're not walking yet, you can keep them more contained. You also have the possibility of getting a bassinet, which I will talk about how to do that. Okay, first let's talk about the really obvious part, a baby bassinet. If you have a baby, a bassinet is a type of insertable bed for a baby that, that goes into the dividing wall between different classes on an airplane. If you want to use a bassinet, you have to have a seat that is in that area on the plane, which means that you have to talk to the airline beforehand. I would recommend calling the airline once you book your tickets and also talking to the stewardess at the check-in counter to assure that you have one of those seats. Place your request for a bassinet when you order your tickets, when you call the airline, and when you're at the check-in counter. There are still some cases where they might not be able to accommodate your request, and that is probably due to the fact that they go with the child who is of the youngest age on the plane who has requested the bassinet. If you do not request a bassinet, there is very little chance that you're going to be offered one or given one. However, there might be a really kind stewardess who notices your situation and tells you, I will put that on your ticket. When you get to the gate, also check again to make sure that you have a baby bassinet secured for you. This might sound a bit annoying, but because you're asking a lot of different people, hopefully it's not going to be grinding on anyone's nerves, maybe just your own. Now, there are a few things to know about a bassinet, however. They are not the magic cure for the entire flight. Unfortunately, because there is turbulence in airplanes, it's not safe for babies to always be in a bassinet, so a stewardess might ask you to take the baby out of the bassinet and hold them. I remember on one flight, it was so turbulent that my baby was hardly in the bassinet at all, and I decided it wasn't worth it for that flight to keep trying it even. But if your flight is rather smooth, you should be fine for your baby to sleep there. Another thing to know is that there are weight limits on the bassinet. Check those with the airline because it could vary by airline and the strength of their bassinet design. Check with them to know what the weight limits are so that you're not planning on the bassinet and you don't end up getting it. I would say that the most sure-proof way to have a place for your baby to sleep alone is to bring a car seat with you rather than a bassinet. Our favorite car seat is one that can be turned rear-facing or forward-facing. Uh, it also accommodates children from newborn all the way up to toddler, and it's one piece, so you don't have to carry multiple pieces through the airport. We also got ours for less than $50, so it is a steal. If you don't want to travel with your normal car seat or you have the option of switching to this car seat, I would totally recommend it. There's a link in the description box below for that car seat. It can also grow with your child, so if you plan on making multiple trips in the future or you only travel occasionally and this is your travel car seat, then it will still work for your child in future years. Also, thinking of babies, bring a nursing cover. If you nurse your baby or even if you feed them a bottle, it's great to have a nursing cover. First of all, because it dims the area for your child. So if there are lights, they can still feel enclosed and be protected from harsh lights. The nursing cover is great for helping your child to go to sleep. It's also great for keeping people's prying eyes away from your baby and your family. If your baby is throwing a crying fit and you want to soothe them with a bottle or with nursing, you can get them away from people's judgmental looks by putting them under the nursing cover and just letting them see your face. My favorite nursing cover is linked in the description box below, as are all of the other resources mentioned in this video. Whether you have a baby or a toddler, put them in footy pajamas. Footy pajamas mean that your child does not have to wear socks 
so you don't have to worry about socks falling off anywhere. You can still put shoes on over the pajamas, but your child feels like they have permission to sleep. I know when my boys wear footy pajamas, they're much more comfortable on a plane, especially on long trips, to fall asleep than they would be in jeans and a shirt or even two-piece pajamas because those can come apart slightly and be a bit cold. They're also easier to change because you don't have multiple pieces that you're working through to change your child if they have a blowout or they pee through their diaper or anything like that or, or spill food or anything like that. And of course, footy pajamas are super comfortable, so your child hopefully is not going to complain of discomfort on the plane. You can buy some pajamas that are fleece. If you're going on a plane that will be in very high altitudes and possibly going over the North Pole or other places like that, then you will want something that will be really warm for your child because the plane gets pretty cold. You can also layer under the footy pajamas or over them. So if your child is colder, you can put a coat on top or you could put a onesie underneath. Pack several days before you're going to travel. This might already be your practice for yourself, but I know as a parent, I started to forget way more things because I have way many more things to remember. One way to prevent unintentionally leaving things behind is to start packing several days in advance. Make a list of all the things that you need, of course, and then put everything that you can pack already in the bag so that it's already done, like sunscreen or bath towels or anything else that you need. Things that cannot yet go in the bag, like sippy cups or a child's favorite books or favorite toys those can be on your list and you know to pack them as time goes on you'll be able to think of more things that you would have forgotten if you hadn't started packing already pack an easily accessible bag this can be a duffel bag a backpack another type of large bag that you can easily get access to this should fit under the seat in front of you on the plane so make sure it's within the dimension specified by the airline inside of this bag of course put snacks and water or at least bottles for water because you might have to refill your bottle in the airport my favorite cup to bring on a trip is the three, Miracle 360 cup uh, because this one doesn't spill super easily, but it's also not a sippy cup. Bring no spill snack bowls and lots and lots of snacks. Also, bring some new toys, coloring books, activity books that your child can enjoy specifically for this trip. The novelty of the items can keep them entertained for a bit. Just the fun activities of the items themselves can keep your child entertained for longer. I have a list on my website of different resources that I recommend for this, different categories of things you can think about such as sensory and art and all of that. And that is linked in the description box below. So be sure to check that out. If you haven't yet heard of Water Wow, it's a type of coloring book that you use water to, uh, that you use a refillable water pen to color. The colors show up as you color the pages and then they fade again as the water dries up. It's a wonderful activity to bring with you on a plane because it's exciting, but you can also keep reusing it. Relax your screen time rules during a flight. This is something that many parents have told me. During a flight, the screen is right there for a TV and so if you're saying no, 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 no all the time to your toddler about the screen, it's not going to let up unless your toddler is a saint. So letting your child have screen time, approved forms of it of course, is a great way to keep them entertained on a plane and also to avoid unnecessary conflict. Along with screen time, bring kids headphones. The headphones on a plane often aren't great for kids, especially earbuds that might hurt children's ears, so bring your own headphones for your child. Many parents I know relax their rules on the plane. They're not going to be nitpicky about all the things that their toddler is doing and I think that's also really important for keeping the toddler's stress levels down so that every little thing doesn't escalate and become a huge issue. Of course, still keep your toddler safe, still hold to your values, but picking on every little thing your toddler does is probably not gonna help anyone in your family. To help kids sleep on the plane, you can give them melatonin gummies. These are specifically for kids, don't give them adult ones. They help their bodies to reduce melatonin, which is a sleep-related hormone, so that your toddler can sleep on the plane, or if you're going to be changing time zones upon your arrival, they can also help your child to change those time zones and to feel tired at the right times. Of course, that is if you plan on which times you're going to give your child melatonin. Okay, let's deal with traveling through the airport. This is the most aggravating part of travel with a toddler. When you're on a plane, at least you're kind of contained and it can be really frustrating to sit there for hours and hours and hours and your toddler wants to get up and wants to have activity. But traveling through an airport is also a time when you can feel stressed, especially if you have connections. So before you travel, check your connections. If they are very short or if they are very long. If your connection is really short, I recommend that you get a layout of the airport before you go. Ask people who have traveled through that airport what it's like, what kind of terminal 
terminals there are and try to research where your term arrival terminal is and where your departure terminal is. You can ask the stewardess or steward on your first flight about the airport before you disembark. Ask them any advice or tips or ways to get from point A to point B faster, more easily. You can also ask them if there's anyone who will be able to help you at your destination. You will also want to prepare beforehand and before you leave your first flight, have everything in place. Maybe an hour before you're going to land, start packing up your children's things. Take them to the bathroom, change their diapers, change their clothes if necessary, do everything Everything that you would otherwise do on the ground so that you can just skedaddle from the airplane to your gate. I also recommend giving your kids snacks during this time so that they're not begging you for food and water while you're trying to run through the airport. Uh, if your layover is long, then you have a different set of circumstances to deal with. The first thing that I would recommend is that you change your child's clothes and if possible, give them a bath, give them a bedtime routine. Bring baby wash and wash your child. There are usually family restrooms in airports. Use that, use the sinks there, the counter there, the changing table there, and give your child a bedtime routine. Try to keep everything as much familiar as possible to minimize your child's stress levels and freakouts. There are also sometimes playgrounds at airports where little children can play. So see if your airport has that and your child can get some energy out and some movement in. Also, if you have a long layover, bring a stroller with you that has a reclining seat so that your child can sleep in it or a carrier that your child is comfortable to sleep in. More on those in just a minute. Make sure that you have local currency or have an international credit card. When you arrive, you're going to be hungry. You're going to get hungry during the time that you have this long layover. Make sure that you have money to buy food, water, and snacks if necessary. Keep your children fed and comfortable. Now for the tools that are great for helping you with your child travel through the airport. You'll probably want to have several options on hand and because who knows how your baby and toddler are going to be feeling in the airport. Bring a baby carrier with you. Our favorite is the Baby Catan Breeze because it is like a wrap, it has the security of a wrap, but it doesn't have all of the handling of a wrap. So it's really easy to put on and take off. It's also lightweight, so if you're going to be hot, moving through the airport, running through the airport, whatever you need to do, or you're in a hot climate, then it doesn't keep all of the moisture in, all of the heat in. We have also used a child leash. If you are not familiar with these, they don't work like dog leashes. They do not go around a child's neck. Instead, they're like a backpack, and then you have a tether attached to them. This is so that your child can walk freely, but also is kept within a safe distance and is not wandering off. My son, my eldest son loves using this. He actually brings it to us when we want to go outside to walk, and he begs us to put it on him because he thinks it's special to be attached to us, but also have his freedom. There's something novel about that to him. These might not be super common, but they were back when I was a child, and so you can find them some places in the United States and definitely overseas. The most important thing as you're traveling through the airport is to keep your child safe and close. So many times airport carts come through unexpectedly, people are running through the airport and might trip over a child that they don't see or don't pay attention to, so keep your child close and safe and the stroller. This is wonderful. This is my favorite way to travel with my children because it's hands-free for me, which means I can be doing other things and they're also super comfortable. They're able to sleep inside of a stroller. If you have only one child, I recommend getting an umbrella stroller. It doesn't have to have an undercarriage because it's not as necessary when you have just one child. It folds up really nicely, goes on a plane well, and it's usually really cheap so that if it does get ruined, you're not going to miss it. When we had two children, we upgraded to a double stroller, and double strollers are really bulky and heavy usually. They're hard to fold often, and they're not fun to handle. We tried several out, and we found that all of those were not great, but we found one that we really love, and we have marveled at it many times since we have started using it. This stroller has many different positions, so if your toddler likes to move around or isn't content in one position, you can change the seating options up. There's also one seat that faces the parents, so if your child needs attention, and you can still give them that without having to hold them as you're walking through the airport. One of the seats reclines pretty much fully so your child can sleep in there and if your child wants to stand on the back, they can do that as well. This is, we have found, the easiest to fold and lightest weight traditional double stroller. It has a great undercarriage with lots of space for putting things inside. You can also remove the top seat uh, for different seating positions, but also to put bigger bags underneath if you wish. It has also stood up really well during our international trips. 
I do recommend, however, that you buy a stroller bag to protect your stroller because strollers are not cheap things and you want to keep using them, especially when if you have a connection and you're getting off one flight to go on to another one. Buy a stroller bag. I have linked one in the description box below that we use that has been really helpful. Make sure that a stroller bag that you are buying fits the dimensions of your specific stroller. Not all double strollers are the same size and not all stroller bags are meant to fit double strollers. So make sure that you check those things carefully. The stroller that I have linked below and the bag I have linked below go really well together so you don't have to worry about that. I've done that for you. And those are all my tips for how to travel with a baby and a toddler. I hope that you are able to glean from all of my experiences that I've had and the experiences of other moms and are able to have a wonderful trip with your baby and toddler. This age is wonderful and it comes with a lot of things that are adjustments for parents and require a lot more attention to detail, but enjoy this time with your kids. I wish you all the best in your travels. I hope that you'll come back and visit with me again soon. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so that you won't miss any upcoming videos. And if this video was helpful to you, consider giving it a like because that helps me to know that these videos are the kinds that you guys want to see. Great to chat with you today. I will see you guys again next time. Bye.